This is the third in a series of videos that we're going to have for nomenclature. We're actually going to have a total of six because right now we're concentrating on going from compound names to the formulas that they have. This time around, we're going to have binary covalent compounds switch from what we had before. So far we've been talking about ionic compounds, now we're going to talk about covalent compounds. The primary difference between the ionic and covalent compounds is the fact that covalent compounds consist of nonmetals. So let's see how this works. First off, in this nomenclature, we're going to use prefixes to show how many of each element are in the compound. Word of caution, only covalent compounds are going to have prefixes like this in them. Ionic compounds do not have prefixes. Keep that in mind for future reference. The prefixes we're going to use are mono for 1, di for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4, penta for 5, hexa for 6, hepta for 7, octa for 8, nona for 9, and deca for 10. These will be familiar to you if you've had geometry class. Now, one of the things we're going to see is that we do not include a prefix on the first element in a compound if that first element is going to have mono. Any other element or any other number we will include a prefix on the very first element in the name but if it is going to only have one atom it, and the prefix would be mono we're just going to leave it off. So let's look at two examples. Here we've got a common compound, you've heard of it before, toxic carbon monoxide. In this we see that we've got no prefix on the first carbon so that means there's only one of them and in the monoxide we've got mono meaning one so we have one oxygen our formula then is simply going to be CO so this is a very simple basic form of nomenclature but you have to be careful it's the the prefixes are only used with nonmetals so related to carbon monoxide is carbon dioxide same elements, different compound because we've got a different ratio of the elements. We've got no prefix on the carbon, so that means there are, is one of them. We have a dye on the oxide for the oxygen, and that means we're going to have two of them, and our formula is CO2, something you should be familiar with already. Let's look at a couple more examples. Dinitrogen tetraoxide, we've got di representing two, tetra representing four, so we have a N2O4 as our formula. Trisulfur heptafluoride. Tri represents 3, hepta represents 7. So our formula is going to be S3F7. And just for fun, dihydrogen monoxide. One of those favorites of the internet crowd stating how toxic and dangerous it is. Uh, it's simply 2 for the di, mono for the 1, and we've got two hydrogens and one oxygen to make water. Go look it up. Interesting. Dihydrogen monoxide on the internet. They've got all kinds of things out there. 